Let's have another look at a problem involving finding the maximum or minimum value of a function. So we've got a wooden box without a lid and it's to have a volume of 32 cubic meters. We want to find the dimensions that minimize the amount of wood used. So amount of wood used, that would be surface area. So we want to have a box of fixed volume with minimum surface area. Let's get a feel for what this looks like. So we've got a box, rectangular box, and we can throw some variables in for the dimension. So let's say width is x, this depth here is y, and the height is z. So we have a volume, which is x, y, z. That's to be 32. We're interested in the surface area. So the surface area for such a box is, well, there's a front panel that has dimensions x times z, and there's two of those because there's also a back panel as well. There's a right panel, which has dimensions y, z, so its area is y times z, and there's two of those. There's a left panel as well. And then there's a bottom panel, which has area x times y, but there's only one of those because it doesn't have a lid. Now, this is a function of three variables. We want to find the minimum value this function can take on. But we know that one of these variables can be expressed in terms of the other one. Because this volume equation tells us that z can be written as 32 over x times y. So if we take that and we plug it into our expression for s, we really get that the surface area function is a function of x and y. And so this would be, we can replace z with 32 over xy, or this becomes 64 over y plus 64 over x plus xy. So that's the function we're interested in. And we want to find the minimum of this. So we want to minimize s for what? For what values of x? Well, we're interested in x being a dimension here, being a width of the box, y being sort of this, this depth or this length of the box. So x and y both have to be positive values. So the only condition is that x and y have to be bigger than zero. So we want to find the minimum value of s on the domain where x and y are both bigger than zero. So how do we do this? Well, we can look for the critical, the critical points first. If we're interested in where the minimum value is, the possibility is it's going to occur at a critical point. So let's find the critical points. Well, that involves finding the x and y partials and setting them to zero. So I can find the x partial derivative. That's negative 64 over x squared plus y. I can find the y partial derivative. That's negative 64 over y squared plus x. We're interested in where both of those are equal to zero. And where's that going to happen? Well, if I look at the equation for the x partial, negative 64 over x squared plus y, if that's going to be 0, then that means that x squared y has to be 64. Similarly, sy equals 0 means that xy squared has to be 64. So those are the two equations that I need xy to satisfy in order to be a critical point. How do I solve these two equations? Well, there's really no general way to solve systems of equations. If they are both linear, then we have techniques from linear algebra. But in general, if they're nonlinear equations, we basically do what we can. And in this case, I notice that if I take the first equation and divide it by the second equation, then I get x squared y over xy squared. That means I will get an x over y for the left-hand side. But then that has to equal the right-hand side of the first equation divided by the right-hand side of the second equation. So that has to equal 1. And then I'll just keep one of the two equations intact. So whatever value of x and y is that satisfies the first two equations, 
those same xy values have to satisfy the second two equations and vice versa. So I can go ahead and solve these second two equations instead. That gives me x is equal to y and plugging that into the second equation that gives me x cubed is equal to 64 or in other words x y has to be 4 4. So that's our critical point. Our critical point is x y is 4 4. Now I want to classify what goes on at this critical point. Is it a maximum? Is it a minimum? So we will classify the critical point. To do this I need to know what the second derivative is with respect to x. So I look at here at s sub x. s sub x is right here. Its derivative is going to be 128 over x cubed. s y y is also 128, but now over y cubed, and sxy is equal to 1. So then at the critical point, 4, 4, we have that sxx at 4, 4 is equal to 128 over 4 cubed. 128, that's 2 to the power of 7, 4 cubed, 2 to the power of 6, so that's equal to 2. And that's also equal to SYY at 4, 4. And SXY is equal to 1, so that means what is our discriminant, our D value? Our D value would be SS, SXX times SYY minus SXY squared, which is equal to 4 minus 1 or 3, which is positive. So I have that SXX is positive and D is positive. So therefore, since D is positive and SXX is positive, that means S has a minimum at 4, 4. What's its value? S at 4, 4 is equal to, so it's got a local minimum here, so S at 4, 4, what is it? It's 64 over 4 plus 64 over 4 plus 4 times 4, so that's 16 plus 16 plus 16, or 48. So that's a surface area of 48, so that's square meters, and so we found our minimum value, and it's 48 square meters. All right, so that's it for this example. Uh, the next video will cover the last example of this section.